So, welcome back. We have been defining family relations and we took the approach that we will start with a primitive set of relation and define everything else in terms of those primitives. So, the primitives that we chose was parent relation. So, x is a parent of y and we talked about gender that x is a male or x is a female. So, with these three kind of facts, we are defining all kinds of relations between which occur in a family. So, we define brother, sister, aunt and so on. Now, let us talk about relations which are arbitrarily far away. So, grandparent you know that they are you know two generations apart and things like that. So, you can write them explicitly that you know a parent's parent is your grandparent, but what about their parent and what about their parent? You cannot write every such relation explicitly, your knowledge base would become you know too huge. Luckily, we can use recursion here to define such relations in logic. So, having defined grandparents and near cousins, how do you talk about relations that may be over arbitrary distances essentially. Here is a recursive definition of the ancestor relation. So, the base clause we can keep it as a parent is an ancestor and the recursive clause would be a parent's ancestor is also an ancestor. So, that definition can be expressed in logic like this that there are two things one is the base clause which is like this which says that when you say that A is an ancestor of X then either A must be the parent of X in this case it will turn out to be either but we do not need to use exclusive or because that situation will never arise. So, we can just use the or there uh, and we can say that A is a parent of X or P is the parent of X and A is the ancestor of P essentially. So, what are we saying here? We are talking about an ancestor A here and an individual X here and we want to see if they are from the same lineage which means that there is a parent child relationship all the way from A to X. And what we are saying here in this definition is that if you want to find out whether A is a ancestor of X, look at the parent of X. Now, there are of course, two parents. So, this would involve search, but when you find the answer, you will see that one of them of course, would be the relevant parent. Of parent. So, so, an edge here denotes a parent relationship and uh, you say okay, look at a parent of X and ask whether that parent is a descendant of A or whether A is the ancestor of the parent essentially. That is what we are saying here. You can see that this will involve certain kind of search here because X will always have two parents. So, let us say parent 1 and parent 2 and the ancestor could be connected to either of them. So, there is some amount of search would be necessary, which we are not emphasizing on. We are only emphasizing on the definitions here essentially. So, the right to left part, we can actually break it down into two separate clauses, uh, which says the base clause says that if P is the parent of X, then P is the ancestor of X. That is the base clause. The recursive clause, we can just copy from here, which is what we have done here. And then we can move the existential quantifier out of the left hand side and convert it into a universal quantifier. So, the definition now becomes for all A x p, if p is a parent of x and a is the ancestor of p, then a is the ancestor of x. This is what we were saying here. Now, this is not the only way that you can define ancestors. Uh, Let us look at one or two more definitions. Because as I said, uh, searching for your ancestor is actually going to be a search over your knowledge base and uh, the search will follow the definition that you have given. 
and which of the following definitions i will give you three definitions here is going to be efficient so when we say efficient we basically mean in the number of inferences that you make essentially there was a time in the mid 80s when the japanese government embarked upon what they call as a fifth generation computer system program and their goal was to build machines which were essentially built on top of logic essentially so they wanted to take the idea of logic programming to its completeness and say that everything we we do will be in terms of logic and they said that they will measure the speed of their machines not in terms of instructions per second but in terms of logical instructions per second logical inferences per second so they use the term lips logical inferences per second but somehow the idea like many ideas did not uh, survive but when we talk about complexity of our representations what we mean is how many inferences you are going to make before you arrive at the answer essentially or how many inferences will you try essentially so the query that we are interested in is of these two kinds we want to find somebody's ancestor or we want to find somebody's descendant which is like saying that that person aisha in this case is the ancestor of someone so in a, we are asking whether x is a descendant of aisha so just like we had defined parent child we can define ancestor descendant relation also so this is the definition we started with which said that you want to connect a and x a is the ancestor and x is the current person and start from the parent of x and then see whether that parent is a descendant of a or whether a is a as ancestor of that parent b that's a definition we just saw we could do the other way we could start searching from the top essentially we could say uh, the first clause is the same in both the cases the second clause is different the second definition which is what we are looking at now says that if you want to check whether a is an ancestor of x we want to say that if a is a parent of x and x is the ancestor of p then a is the ancestor of x so this definition is right but we have sur started searching from the ancestor essentially so so obviously which one would be more efficient would de depend upon what is the query essentially for one query one definition may be better for the other query the other definition may be better so i would like you to think about that and say that how would you take care of efficiency here essentially another aspect that may uh, influence the complexity is branching factor essentially uh, now of course everybody has only two parents but people may have any number of children so it could range from one because we are talking of a relationship here from one up to any number essentially so then an ancestor may have many children whereas uh, descendant will have only two parents so the branching factor if you are searching from bottom to top it be only two from the top it depends on what is the number of children that people have in general i think what about this definition the first clause is the same the base clause is the same the second clause says that a is an ancestor of x if p is an ancestor of x and a is the ancestor of p essentially so both the clauses in the left hand side are ancestor clauses will this work so i will leave you to think about this another question that you might want to ask is does the order matter inside the conjunct so should i write the parent first or the ancestor first if i am using a parent and an ancestor definition that is something that you should have pondered over when you were looking at prolog so it depends upon what is the 
uh, evaluation mechanism that we are using for this. A common error that people make when expressing things in logic is to they omit the category of the variables in the sentence or the terms in the sentence. So, if you want to say that every student likes some course, you must include the category or the class membership of the two variables or the two terms which is the student and course. So, the correct way to say that is for all s, if s is a student, then there exists a c where c is a course and s likes c. This would be the correct way where you would also specify the categories of what you are talking about. Simply saying that for all student there exists a course such that likes student course would be wrong because when you say for all student the fact that we are using the name student does not mean anything. We are simply saying for anything in the domain. So, that sentence is really saying that every element in the domain likes some element. There can be typed logics in which we can allow variables to have different types. Now, in we will not look at type first order logics, but we will look at event calculus later where we will see that we will distinguish between different types of variables. So, for example, time will be one kind of a variable, event will be or action would be one kind of a variable, uh, proposition or a predicate would be another kind of variable. We will look at those things later, but they are in a higher order logic essentially. One thing that we would also like to do often is to define categories or, or new categories in terms of what we already know. So, one thing one could define is, so we can create certain classes of elements by using the relations that they are involved in. So, look at the example of a mother. When you want to say x is a mother, you can define it by saying that for all x, mother x is equivalent to saying that there exists a c such that x is the mother of c essentially. Hmm. So, we have defined x as a class or a category and this we have extracted from the binary relation that she is participating in. So, defining categories is something that one must learn to do. So, I would ask you to define what are even numbers, what are odd numbers, what is a prime number, what is a Fibonacci number and so on. Later in the course, we will look at description logics, which are logics about noun phrases. So, they only talk about categories, they do not talk about individuals. I mean, they do talk about individuals in the sense that you an individual is allowed to be a member of a category, but they do not talk about variables essentially, individuals essentially. So, they only say that mothers are somebody who whatever, whatever, whatever like we have defined here, mothers are somebody who have at least one child. So, that would what we would say in description logic. They define concepts in terms of other concepts and relations essentially. So, this the other the, the statement that we have here could be expressed in description logics as well. So, when we say there exists C, it means there must be at least one child. So, mother is a subset of the domain D such that there exists one role filler is the term we use in description logics for the child relations. So, we have looked at some family relations and we have tried to define categories. We will come back and move to a different domain of graph theory and just see how we can talk about graphs essentially. We will do that in the next session.